On April 21st, 2013, I got into my first real relationship. George was every girl in, at my high school's dream boyfriend. Popular, fun, and caring. And he knew how to sweet talk so, so well, and 15-year-old me loved it. He was my first boyfriend, and he made sure I knew I wasn't his first girlfriend. He slowly gained control over me while I quickly lost myself to an 18-year-old. His caring quality took a sharp turn into possessiveness. Every friend I had, I lost, and I was only allowed to speak to the ones he chose for me, and that encouraged him to treat me like property. I couldn't choose my own clothes. My outfits were pre-approved by someone who didn't want anyone else to see me. And of course, making sure I was healthy enough for him. Healthy in the sense that I had to be under 120 pounds to be enough for someone who always had models blowing his phone up. It started with dinner when he first met my family. We were having pasta that night. Are you really going to eat that? You know I want you skinny. How come someone like me date a fat girl? I constantly excused this behavior as him caring. After all, he told me he loved me each night and would never do anything to hurt me. He only wanted what was best for me, and I gave in to each of the things he said. But what all his caring did was isolate me, control me, and make me so weak I couldn't fight back, physically or verbally. In September of 2013, he tried to get me pregnant. He always carried condoms, and I watched him put them on, but after one time in particular, it wasn't there afterwards. All I could think of was fuck. I had just turned 16 in August. I was trying to get on the volleyball team at school. The test that I took was negative, thankfully, but that wasn't right in his book. He blamed me for aborting the child I wasn't pregnant with in the first place. Why would you abort my kid? You weren't supposed to do that. I should just kill you. I was never pregnant. You're a lying whore. You were. It was someone else's, wasn't it? And you tried covering it up by having an abortion, you stupid slut. And that was the beginning of the death threats. I was nothing. Absolute dirt he walked all over. I was broken down every single day by what he called me. Worthless, whore, bitch. Any humiliating, demeaning, shaming word you could think of, I was called. Not just once or twice a week, either. Every single day I was called something different or a combination of them. Worthless, stupid whore. On top of being physically so weak because I couldn't eat, I became so emotionally weak I didn't know how to fight back. He still wanted me this tiny, underweight girl to use as a sex object and verbally destroy in the process. In April of 2014, I tried to break up with him. I gathered up the courage to leave this toxic person and told him I was done. I did it in person, and on our way back to his house, I had gone up with him to gather my things. He told me not to go in, but if I didn't, I would never get my things. When I made it inside his house, he exploded. You're a fucking whore. You only don't want to be with me so you can go fuck other guys. I'm not giving you your shorts so you don't need them. They don't need to see you. Or your books. You're stupid anyways. Get out of my house. I ignored him. I fought for my things. He threw me on the bed and put his hands around my throat. See how fucking easy it is to kill you? I can do it right here. No one would know. No one would miss you. You're trash. Use trash that no one would want anyway. After he let me go, I ran and grabbed my things. He threw me into a wall in the living room. And as I was leaving, he completely changed and was begging me to stay with him. But I left, and not even two minutes after, I got a call from him. He had cut a gash into his arm so deep that it required nine staples to close. He blamed me and told the officers I did it to him. His family called me and told me it was my fault to stay away from him, but he threatened to kill me if I left. To make it up to him, I had to stay. He already proved how easily he can kill me, and I didn't want the thought, the way of someone dying because of me. A month after this incident, he raped me in his friend's car. We went to the mall a couple weeks later, and he stole a pregnancy test for me at Target and demanded I take it. I went to the bathroom, took the test, and wanted to die. I sat there crying, staring at the test in disbelief. It was positive. I thought about telling him it was negative and aborting it. But I didn't want to die. He'd find out. He told me he always had people watching me. So I told him, it's positive. He said, good, you're mine forever now. Aren't you happy? I wasn't. As my pregnancy developed, he didn't change. He raped me because I wouldn't have sex with him. It was painful. I would cry. He would laugh. 
This was all a game to him, his sick, manipulative game that I was stuck in. We can grow fat together now. I can grow fat by eating and you can just have a baby. But you still have to be desirable. Like those women who don't look pregnant from behind. Or like my sister, she was hot when she was pregnant. So I was underweight during my pregnancy just like I was before it. I don't think I ever reached over 150 pounds. Are you going to eat that? I hope so. You're too small to be pregnant. Is that even my kid? You know, my mom was huge with me, so you should be a lot bigger. Fortunately, it was his child, but he was still in denial. You're a whore. I want a DNA test. This kid isn't mine. No one believes it is. But I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. But I swear to God, Alex, if this kid isn't mine, I'm killing the both of you. I got death threats so often throughout the day, it didn't even face me at one point. So, he found another way to try and get under my skin. He made up many girls, but one girl in particular was named Gabby. Gabby was a model that really wanted him. George gave her my number. She texted me repeatedly how she was going to steal George from me and have his kids and be the perfect subservient wife. I begged her to do so. I told her to take him. I told her to have him leave me alone. I told her to love him that way. George obviously knew about Gabby and her bothering me because he was Gabby, so he promised to get rid of her. He told me he killed her for me. But I didn't care. He didn't like that. So another tactic to get me to care was crying to me every single night from January to May 2015 that he was going to kill himself and that it'd be my fault. He would write it out saying it was all me and that he had the proof for it. I begged him to just do it already. I knew he would. Abusive men aren't men of their word. But I was so tired of him physically, mentally, and emotionally that if he did actually kill himself, I wouldn't care. He knew he was losing me and did everything he could to try and keep me. His death threats were nothing. I begged him to kill me. His suicide, threat, suicide threats were nothing either. I begged him to just do it already. On February 10th, 2015, I went into labor. I begged him not to come, but he did. And he was absolutely no help. He teased me with food that I couldn't eat. He watched movies and played games on his phone. He ignored me the entire time, and when I asked for something, he told me to get it myself. He helped me shower when I was around seven centimeters dilated, but actually just tried to have sex with me. And when I was walking around the hospital, he tried to trip me as a joke. When the baby was finally here, he cried because he wasn't the first to hold her. When I was finally able to eat, he took some of my food for himself so I wouldn't get fat. And when we finally got placed in the recovery room, he slept on the hospital bed while I slept on the small couch. In March 2015, I weighed 130 pounds, one month after giving birth to his child. But that didn't matter. He didn't care about her. He didn't want anything to do with her, but did everything he could to make sure we stayed together. I was still an object, something he could throw around, threaten, control, abuse. I was so thin, so was my baby. She was so small, she always wanted to eat, she always wanted to be next to me. Being a new worrisome mom, I thought I was hurting her, but thankfully it was all normal for a baby to always want to eat, and she was just petite. Whenever I tried to nap, he tried to have sex with me. Whenever he got me alone, he tried to have sex with me. Some days I was too tired to say no, and he would force himself inside of me with my baby sleeping right next to me. I was nothing at this point and finally started to believe it. But then he messed up. I finally got a text saying he will kill me. I was so happy he finally texted me that so I could print it out and actually have some evidence. I got a temporary restraining order and an emergency one keeping him from me. And it made him crazy. He called me every day for a month, which amounted to almost 2,000 missed calls. He sent me text after text about how he didn't care about the baby and that he wanted to just have me. I was finally ahead and I was in control. I got a restraining order in place. He has no vegetation rights and I was finally free. Or so I thought. I had a lot of mental health problems left to deal with after that. I had to learn how to eat again and allow my body to actually take in food. I have to still learn that my baby is not who her dad is. Until September of 2016, I hated myself. I hated my baby. I hated being alive. I was afraid everywhere I went. I was constantly on edge, constantly making escape plans in case I saw him. My mind was constantly in fight or flight. I didn't know how to deal with any of this at all. 
I didn't even want to be a mom at this age. I was only 18. I didn't know how much of this was normal, but I also didn't want to admit that this was any type of mental illness. It can't be, not to me. I convinced myself nothing of what happened had actually happened and that it was all just a bad nightmare. Until September 2016 when I finally went to seek counseling. I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, general anxiety disorder, depression, and postpartum depression. I saw a therapist, a psychiatrist, and a sexual assault advocate. I repeated everything that happened to me over and over at each session. My therapist helped me with getting over my eating problem, and I was prescribed antidepressants. I had to create my own mental health support system because no one around me really wanted to deal with it. No one wants to hear the same story over and over. My team did. Partly because it was their job, but also because they really cared and wanted me to succeed. Even now, some days are harder than others, but I'm still learning. I'm only 20 years old. It would be foolish of me to shut down, especially with all that I've done for myself. I'm no longer underweight. I can do things without an escape plan, and most nights I can even sleep without having crazy nightmares. Her dad is still not in the picture, thankfully, and I'm definitely not anywhere near okay but I'm enough okay to stand up here and say this. And when I'm not, I can always eat the things that I like or talk to who I want to talk to.